Okay, good morning everyone. We are glad to see you back. I hope you're, you're following uh, our lives. This time we're having an interview with Igor Jung, uh, the managing partner of Finport Fund. And we're going to talk about uh, probably one of the most concerning aspects of the 2018 for the crypto community, which is what's going on with ICOs and where is the promised revolution of commerce. Uh, good morning, Inger. Uh, please uh, uh, tell us a bit about uh, about your experience. Uh, w well, regarding your personal experience and FinForge, uh, let's do a little bit of self promotion here. We are preparing our summit, and definitely we would like to uh, present us from the very best of our sides uh, and. Uh, I'd like to ask you some questions uh, that would concern uh, what's actually going on with ICOs. But before, uh, I'd like you uh, to give us a chance sort of to tell how we can influence the story. Uh, now, as one of the very preliminary things, uh, do you actually think uh, do you actually think that uh, it is possible to influence the market situation with some community work and with some uh, summit conference or uh, or any event like that? Um, hi, hi everyone. Uh, thank you, Dennis, for the question. Uh, you know, I think that uh, life is a little bit uh, complicated. And uh, no, even Simon, even the best Simon in the world, can't uh, influence the market, can't change the situation in the market, uh, can't fight with the trends, bearish or other trends. So um, uh, here is more important the, uh, not the uh, any summit or meetup or something like that, but general uh, um, uh, implementation of business. Um, in, the, in real business process, uh, the blockchain technologies, because yeah, summit is okay. It's very important to uh, take part in your comments, to uh, share your experience, to know what people do, um, because you know this market is very open and uh, now in the process of taking the ideas and theory. And um, uh, so now it's kind of preparing the real implementation of blockchain. Uh, so that's why to visit uh, such events uh, just to share the experience uh, because this is the most important right now nobody knows what happened in the market um, what will be in the future uh, what will be in the month or in a year um, so it's important to share the experience what people do to uh, make the good networking and now this is a process of preparing uh, for the big jump as we think Mm -hmm. Well, uh, in my humble experience, uh, I have seen cases when uh, we could see some, not to say drastic, but uh, rather significant, uh, nonetheless short uh, uh, and unstable changes of the crypto market uh, linked to some particular events. Uh, now, do you actually uh, think you could Tell me, like, let's say, what event you remember the most in blockchain and crypto in 2018, like, as probably an influence event, and, and what sort of influence shall we expect? Um, so, uh, I remember the talk in 2049 in Hong Kong. I remember the Young Talks in Seoul uh, and Crypto Valley Association uh, Conference in Suk. Um, uh, so, due to consensus, it's nice, but you know, I think it's a little bit overrated. Um, uh, so, I think that uh, real influence um, at the crypto market will start not from the crypto funds or uh, crypto enthusiasts, crypto anarchists or something like that, guys, but from the uh, big uh, corporate companies will start to with blockchain, literally start work with blockchain and um, uh, start implementing the blockchain in its real business processes. Uh, from this point of view, uh, I think big corporations uh, and even um, middle level of business start blockchain. This uh, will be a sign market 
the revolution is mm -hmm. uh, well we all are used to think that you know like the crypto market as one of the high-tech markets uh, is yeah. uh, is kind of entitled uh, to uh, rather uh, to rather few limitations uh, in terms of the location but uh, the thing is that definitely speaking about blockchain implementation, we are uh, more or less biased towards uh, some particular locations, not in terms of the event itself, but uh, basically what I'm asking is, in your opinion, which countries uh, will or are taking uh, the leading uh, positions in uh, crypto and blockchain, like let's say uh, over the past few years and in the nearest future? Uh, yeah, I think this is Asia, Asian countries and the United States. Uh, so I think that Singapore, uh, Hong Kong, maybe Taiwan, uh, but first of all, Korea uh, will be the leading countries uh, in Asian region. So when China will solve uh, its problems with the banking system um, and so, uh, start using blockchain uh, like more widely accepted as a technology and uh, problems of cryptocurrencies and ICO uh, will have um, a white light uh, in China. So yeah, China will, uh, uh, will be like a rocket to the moon and will be one of the uh, leading positions. But now, no. Uh, Europe, I think it could be Switzerland. Um, uh, and uh, maybe Germany, but uh, when uh, Germany start, uh, Germany companies start implementation of blockchain. But now in Europe, I see kind of uh, conservative trends, and uh, trends is very good. Little countries like Malta, Gibraltar, Estonia. Uh, so now we have positive news from France. But frankly speaking. Uh, not, uh, it's not so important which countries will take crypto leading positions. It's more important or, or what banks and what ba uh, what bank system will uh, allow uh, to work with cryptocurrencies or with the digital assets. Because you know, uh, for example, in Estonia, uh, very good legislation, very good market about uh, like crypto nation, something like that. But banks. Are very bad, and that's why it's uh, so it's going to have great limitation of using blockchains. And so, uh, here it's more important to combine the activity of government and the bank system because you can't do a lot of positive things with a bank account uh, and uh, without uh, uh, understanding of theory and procedures. Uh, so uh, we think that sometime in the future we will see the world where a bank will open uh, yeah, the gates uh, to, uh, to companies, uh, crypto funds, and will understand what they do uh, and don't be afraid that yeah, it's like a dirty money or something like that. Uh, so a lot of uh, crypto funds and crypto companies are open and are ready to OK with CML procedures, but you know, banks do not understand that or maybe do it with uh, um, uh, any other thoughts that we do not know. But anyway, now uh, it's more important to say uh, not about just the countries, but about uh, countries and bank uh, activity to combine it together. Uh, that will make sense. Mm -hmm. Well, but that anyway, it uh, depends on uh, each particular jurisdiction and each particular banking system, which, which could be a little bit politically driven, I'd say, to some extent. Uh, and that is uh, something we await uh, in general about cryptocurrencies. But since you mentioned ICOs in particular, uh, well, um, speaking about, uh, say your work experience with finforge or probably outside of that like like up until now which jurisdictions or which countries have uh demonstrated say most loyalty and therefore you know um uh where was it uh safer and easier in your experience to launch an ico project uh 
for say both investors or backers of the project and for the project itself like where are their least um, uh, unexpected dangers for either side mm -hmm. so uh, to our experience your know, Singapore is number one uh, place where it's better to launch so uh, I can't say that it's safer or easier but uh, to, to be honest, the, the most effective jurisdiction is Singapore, um, also um, Estonia. But uh, you know, it's you can't compare Estonia and Singapore. It's you know, another um, weights. Uh, also, uh, Gibraltar uh, have a lot of companies from there, and BVI, Camp, uh, BVI and Cayman Islands are also very popular during the projects uh, as a jurisdiction. But we. Do not believe in the great future of uh, BVI and Ireland as a perfect jurisdiction for an ICO because you know combine all factors um, as we think uh, Asian jurisdiction like Hong Kong and Singapore is more effective. It's not easy at all, but you know you have their uh, resources, you have their a lot of good business people and a lot of technical um, community. So uh, to combine these three factors um, plus uh, you know, English common law uh, jurisdiction, uh, yeah, it will make sense that you know, as we think Singapore I, yeah, and Hong Kong. Uh, in Europe also it could be Liechtenstein. Um, so we believe in the Liechtenstein, yeah, maybe Luxembourg and Switzerland, but you know, Switzerland yeah, had, had a big minus. Uh, it's uh, huge costs, uh, you know, it takes a lot of money for you to run the company and to uh, hire uh, Swiss people. So you even don't earn something, but you have to pay already a lot to get Swiss people work on you. So, yeah, United States also makes sense, uh, but, uh, you know, a lot of uh, people from the United States are aware uh, from this jurisdiction because it's, uh, high taxes. Um, yeah, it's a challenge for them, but generally they also have good factors as a financial resource, technical people, and um, you know, a uh, good community. But you know, uh, a lot of laws restrictions, about legal restrictions. Yeah, it's uh, growing America down and down uh, in this uh, market. Uh -huh. um, well. Yes, I've myself taken part in a couple of ICO startups like last year. And yeah, both of them were actually filed uh, under the Singapore jurisdiction. Uh, nonetheless, cannot I truly say it was significantly cheaper than any other jurisdiction, but it was mostly about the taxation policy, which is, uh, in my experience, so far, well, best or one of the best established right there. Um, so, but it actually does not uh, concern uh, investor security that much. Uh, so, uh, let's say, well, since we have uh, spoken uh, about uh, conferences, summits, and uh, the countries for that, so trying to self-promote our blockchain leadership summit, let's give you a chance to do a little bit of self-promotion as well. Uh, now, uh, tell me a bit more about FinForge and to all of our audiences. Uh, we know that it consults and supports startups. Now, uh, would you please elaborate on that? Like, uh, which uh, problems do startup uh, uh, do startups develop in uh, like their projects on blockchain and DLT uh, like uh, come to you with? What is uh, their biggest pain that FinForge uh, helps them with? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, uh, so uh, our focus is the blockchain infrastructure. Uh, so we believe that uh, until the infrastructure won't work well, uh, so the whole um, uh, the whole uh, uh, cryptocurrency market won't so good uh, won't will be here because you know all application um, won't run uh, without good infrastructure so we try to support infrastructural projects to solve the main uh, problems of the blockchain and uh, you know we have uh, different types of startups so uh, 25 percent of startups uh, 
are from Asia and uh, to be uh, frankly speaking, so 50% of Asian startups are very well packed. So they have a good business plan, they understand the reality, uh, they um, try to raise um, a reasonable amount of money and so uh, we just ca can give them uh, a little bit networking um, and um, uh, maybe meet with the uh, right people. But, you know, other startups in Europe, uh, from the United States, I don't know, <laughs> but you know, in, uh, like only 20, 30 percent of startups from Europe and the United States are understand uh, their values and what they do. So um, uh, they are mainly focused on the how to raise money. But uh, we uh, try to explain that it's so important how much you uh, try to raise. It's more important uh, about your business plan, uh, cash flow, uh, because you know 90% of ISO projects don't do not have any reasonable business plan uh, when they tr what they try to do. Is, you know, very young and you know fresh market, fresh people, but you know, the rules of economy are the same everywhere in uh, blockchain technology or in uh, uh, fintech uh, venture uh, industry. So it doesn't matter. You have to do a very good um, customer development and you have to do a uh, business plan. Um, you have to be very uh, conservative because, you know, uh, um, uh, a lot of optimists is, is bad, to be honest. Uh, so uh, we help startups with uh, uh, networking. We help them with the technical sites, with the technical audits of smart contracts. We help them, of course, with the money. But you no, know, we are not focused on the just money. Uh, but try to help them also with the consulting services, like help them with uh, their problems. Uh, legal documents, uh, help them with white papers, uh, yellow papers, um, and also we help them uh, with um, uh, real uh, business cases, with, uh, 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 for example, leading Russian companies uh, to understand how we can implement uh, the software of the startups, uh, its solution in the real uh, uh, business. So we um, um, believe that uh, startups will be successful, uh, an ISO project will be successful when you have big, um, big partners uh, uh, and the partners will start to use your software, you will start to, will start to use your solution and uh, this is so, so important. And uh, um, you know, now on not so many companies, um, uh, not so many ISO startups prepare for such deep and work. So they, they generally ask us about promoting um, uh, the projects around Russian speaking community. So organizing meetups and something like that. So um, when market uh, grows and uh, everything grows within that market uh, and that past conditions, we have uh, no problem with that. But now uh, we uh, have like more experience and people has more experience and if company will ready to play um, uh, on the next level on the, with big uh, corporations so for us is quality of startup because you know community is okay but you know community has a lot of positive then community has a lot of negative but uh, the only companies will survive who will ready to play on the uh, conservative uh, um, field uh, with the corporate clients. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, speaking of uh, uh, corporate practice and let's say corporate ethics and um, well, and the common practice of uh, you know the traditional market, like uh, you say that uh, you expect some sort of uh, good faith dealing and uh, well readiness to to actually play the regular market rules, uh, and that is right. Uh, well. Uh, what do you actually consider the main differences between the between working with crypto assets uh, and uh, traditional assets of ventures in general? 
Uh, so uh, the big plus for us uh, to work with crypto, this is the first transactions because uh, and there's no uh, limitation, legal limitation uh, uh, due to investments. Uh, I mean uh, that uh, if we like Estonian company now plan to invest a couple million dollars to the Swiss company, if it's regular venture, uh, we had to prepare a lot of um, uh, papers, uh, uh, hundreds of lawyers and uh, audits, uh, so huge amount of job. Uh, so it's much more easier to work with cryptocurrencies and ICO projects, so um, it's quicker. Um, I mean like a couple days and the big deal is already done. Uh, there's high risks because um, there's no uh, strong protection uh, for the investors, um, but uh, we uh, have our own like scoring system uh, and uh, try to invest only in that companies that will uh, show um, like some good marks uh, that we will evaluate and uh, will um, will solve this problem not from legal part but from another point of views. Uh, also, it's easier to buy and sell uh, our tokens. Uh, it's easier to um, start cooperation with different companies. So, if you work with uh, traditional legal companies, uh, traditional companies, uh, so you had to prepare, as I say, a lot of documents, NDAs, uh, letter of intent, you know, something like that. When you start do the thing, and so it could uh, take, I mean, a couple months. When you got just an email uh, to any uh, level of ICO company, it w it could be top ten cryptocurrencies. It could be a huge um, um, technical provider uh, in ICO. So no matter uh, in ninety nine percent, you will have good feedback. Uh, it, it will be quick feedback, and yeah, so uh, things here faster because now it's uh, the period of testing the ideas. And uh, only those people who run fast uh, will succeed. So, you know, you have no limitations as in uh, regular markets um, uh, where, you know, companies have their own niches and it's not easy to uh, create new niches and to uh, fight for uh, another place under the sun. But here, more, more freedom and uh, it all depends on you, how you uh, had to walk uh, 24 hours, seven days a week, or you want to drink a martini. Well, work 24 seven with martini alone. <laughs> yeah, that is also plausible. Uh, yes, uh, I have also definitely noticed that uh, in terms of uh, in terms of formality, definitely I, the ICO market is is much uh, user friendly, customer friendly. That is true. It's it's just more flexible right now. But uh, talking about uh, what we have all heard, you know that uh, ICO is the next revolution in commerce. And now you say that well, anyway, uh, those projects will survive that are actually ready to follow the more traditional uh, practice that are ready to catch up on the traditional guidelines and rules. Uh, well, how does that actually comply with the idea of revolution? It's not actually revolving, it's just using the new technology which solves some problems. Like you mentioned uh, the transactional speeds and costs. And Well, anyway, I believe that uh, the ICO market openness towards a customer is not even a technological aspect it's more of a human aspect that people that fresh entrepreneurs of the market definitely are more open towards uh, their customers but speaking of the revolution shall we actually expect that or shall we as you first said expect uh, the uh, the traditional growth you know like the evolution towards a healthier and uh, more mature market. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that uh, uh, there's no revolution uh, because uh, ICO and cryptocurrencies, uh, so they try to solve the problems of traditional uh, 
um, business and its race as a uh, as a chance to make uh, traditional business more flexible. So it can't uh, be in vacuum. So uh, blockchain uh, doesn't make sense. It it won't solve uh, problems of real business. So I think it will be the rebalancing of the interest of traditional business and uh, blockchain companies. So uh, they had to find um, like points where they will cooperate because um, uh, blockchain as a technology uh, can help uh, be more flexible to the traditional uh, business and uh, traditional business will show the um, to blockchain uh, its pain and how blockchain can solve this pain. And we had to uh, understand that blockchain is not the um, uh, like panacea from all uh, pains, and you know it won't solve the problems of the world. So uh, blockchain is like the distributed data database. So no more, no less. Uh, so and only in that aspect where database can give um, the additional um, um, additional classes to businesses. So only in that cases, a blockchain will be successful. So uh, database, synchronized database with different types of consensus or something like that, it, it's not the panacea. And uh, mm, uh, I think uh, that uh, traditional business and blockchain should face to each other and start to talk to each other. Because now uh, from blockchain company, there's some type uh, misunderstanding to traditional business, so that we, we are like the new uh, level of uh, evolution or something like that. And traditional business also looks at the uh, blockchain companies as to people, uh, as to child, young, a child who don't understand um, the real uh, problems of business. So only when they face each other, uh, I think it will be the uh, the progress. Uh, so. From that point of view, uh, I think uh, such companies as import, uh, as we understand the blockchain people, we understand the traditional uh, business people. So we should be like the wise parents to that uh, help to find communication points for such different uh, minds, traditional business and blockchain people. Mm -hmm. Well, and speaking of uh, business implementation, it, well, yes, the blockchain is a technology that just is designed to solve the problems that we can actually logically solve. Uh, quite often, uh, on the contrary, uh, I, uh, I have... I have seen quite a weird story, you know, like there were so many and there still are so many startups, you know, just saying, okay, uh, since blockchain is a database, we're going to use it and we're going to become, you know, like the next Google or something. And the big deal was that, as for me, uh, they started from the wrong step, you know, like they, they decide like, okay, uh, what uh, problems that are already solved? Uh, can we actually solve uh, utilizing uh, the distributed ledger technology? Uh, as for me, a business starts where a market problem, where, where some people's problem actually is solved. And uh, this is where I would like to refer to, uh, I would like you to refer to your experience, uh, like um, in what uh, lines of business or areas uh, have you seen the best uh, implementation of the blockchain te technology where it was actually justified? You know, it wasn't just a reinvention of Google or a bicycle, but where uh, where it was uh, truly justified. And uh, well, my second question would be: uh, w What spheres have not been that much affected with the blockchain implementation, but they could uh, potentially benefit from the introduction of DLTs? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, so we think that uh, blockchain um, have, has no value in the areas where we have only two parties. And these two parties can deal with each other, so there's no need to blockchain. Uh, but blockchain, in, uh, like in, in the companies, in, in the situation where we will have the third party, and uh, so P, uh, all this three parties don't understand how to trust each other. So, so in these cases, we think that agent um, structure uh, 
uh, is uh, that place where blockchain will be very successful. For example, you have bank, you have provider, and you have agent, and uh, provider um, gives the right to the agent to sell its products and services, and uh, you know, agent works with the community, uh, sell it, and uh, bank should uh, um, uh, approve of this transaction. And in this circle, blockchain could be successful uh, because you know, agent um, uh, scheme is very popular. You can find it in, almost in uh, each sphere of life. Um, it all depends on the um, uh, on the sphere of the um, business. For example, it could be supply chain, it could be payments, it could be government services. So, and here it, it could be a lot of barriers, legal barriers, and you know any other mountains to uh, run off. But um, we think that. Uh, yeah, agency be a place where blockchain will um, show its real value because, uh, as a lot of people said uh, about insurance and about payments, the blockchain it could be the uh, so the payments will be the first place or where we will see the rise of blockchain. But no, we will see what, what we have. So banks generally uh, play against the blockchain against cryptocurrencies. Uh, and so, you know, if uh, blockchain real um, has real impact on the payments, so and will make the banks uh, lower its cost, I think 100% banks already will implement blockchain it's in its real business cases. Um, but we do not see it exactly right now. So it could be. Uh, two uh, reasons or why so the first one so that uh, banks are feel like the monopoly guys and don't interested in uh, find something new but we see that not that because you know banking system is a very competitive system and the second one that uh, banks do not understand the blockchain as a technology but we also see that uh, a lot of banks has uh, its own um, blockchain communities or like blockchain laboratories uh, where they test uh, blockchain in, like um, in these cases uh, so I don't know the reason but I think that um, when uh, um, companies understand that benefits from blockchain and you know blockchain community will face to these uh, traditional companies and they will understand each other and start to implement blockchain in uh, real business activity, in everyday business activity. Uh, so then we will see the real value of the blockchain to the um, society, to the government. So, yes. But now I think that uh, government could be uh, the, leading, uh, the leader player in uh, this field because, uh, on my opinion, uh, government services are so need uh, blockchain uh, updated. Uh, so, you know, government has huge databases and if government will give uh, more freedom to people how uh, their own personal data. Uh, so it will be the real revolution, but no. Mm -hmm. Well, uh... Well, yeah, I'm totally on your side in terms of the technological implementation, cutting out the agent or at least modifying the agent's work. Uh, and what I would like to highlight is, uh, well, probably for the rest of our audience is that it's not only, uh, Igor is not only talking about banks, actually, it could be basically anything. And this is what uh, we will... Uh, yeah. We will gladly host on our summit. We will have representatives from different uh, lines of business yeah. and industries, including healthcare and uh, smart technologies like Internet of uh, Internet of Thing uh, Things, um, and uh, it could be applied basically to anything: taxation, uh, voting. It could be actually a thing, a technology that improves our. Uh, political life and infrastructure, uh, but uh, uh, but the thing is that, well, what I believe is one of the probably uh, downsides of the past two years is that 
uh, too many startups and projects rather than to actually develop such infrastructural solutions. They, they just worked uh, for, for the fundraising, for the money raising, uh, utilizing and actually squeezing out everything out of the hype of the new technology applied. Uh, now, in, in your prospects, in your opinion, do you believe that the 2019, the following year, will also, uh, will also stick to the hype-driven trends or, or is actually the, uh, the natural, the, the healthy implementation of the DLT already there, awaiting us like soon? Uh, so we believe that, uh, and we hope <laughs> that uh, we won't see high driver trends on the ISO cryptocurrency market next year. So we think that it could be a race uh, of the market, but not to the hype, because hype uh, come and gone. But due to the real uh, implementation uh, of uh, blockchain by the biggest corporate players. So, uh, and we believe that uh, the main uh, infrastructure project that raised money uh, this year, last year, will launch the main nets and we will see how it will, how it is, will work. And we uh, understand how to um, deal with the solutions because uh, now it's just an expectation that we, uh, for, that such uh, companies doing the blockchain of force uh, first generation, fourth generation, third generation, no matter. So uh, that your solution will be adopted by the community, will be adopted by uh, the business. And uh, as we think that it will be the uh, rise of the market, but it will be uh, uh, evolution of rise. Because uh, now the market in the process of testing the um, ideas and, uh, you know, 99% um, of the ideas uh, you know, uh, didn't meet, uh, did, uh, didn't face uh, to the reality. And so, uh, you know, it's, uh, nobody needed. Uh, and uh, I think that the whole this time we will uh, work uh, on the evolution of driving, not high driving on the market. Uh, yeah, and we will, uh, uh, try to help our projects understand that because the, the uh, more conservative they will be, uh, the more active they will work with corporate fields. Um, so the, uh, the healthier business they will have and uh, the more successful they will be as we think. So um, we believe in the evolution of price for the market. So no, no more high please. <laughs> <laughs> we're begging you we're really tired we have we have already started to lose a lot <laughs> okay well uh thank you for that and actually uh i'm extremely glad that we share uh well uh, the same attitude uh towards the market development and uh before we end let's probably have another minute of self-promotion that will no one notice and they will think that it's just the natural flow of our talk. Uh, in your opinion, uh, what will the uh, uh, what will the attendance of our blockchain leadership summit, which comes in November twenty second, twenty third, give uh, to our guests, followers, and listeners, uh, both from uh, the market perspective, or from the informational uh side and definitely uh, from uh your participation in the summit so uh i'm sure that all uh, uh such events and summits uh, will be very um useful um, um, to visit and because um at this summit it's like the huge brainstorms where people very well experienced people share their ideas and uh, could have a very quick feedback on these ideas so uh, you will be at the age of uh, uh, blockchain glory uh, i mean uh, that you will understand and you will meet with the uh, latest trends in the industry so the uh, and you will have the most 
the most uh, like valuable and the freshest information uh, as it will be in ma the market. So uh, you will understand uh, due to the visiting of the uh, Blockchain Leadership Summit that um, how to transform your business, how to uh, make a pivot, big or little pivot, but anyway. Uh, you understand how to change your business or maybe you understand that you will run uh, even uh, quicker than the others and prove your ideas, uh, prove your concepts. Uh, so we love such events, uh, especially in Europe, because frankly speaking, this is, uh, there's a lack of good quality events in Europe. Um, so. Uh, for us, Switzerland and all Switzerland people and all Switzerland summits are uh, no doubt to visit. Uh, so uh, please join us uh, because uh, we think that um, uh, Swiss it's very interesting uh, because uh, a lot of uh, conservative big companies uh, that uh, not afraid to test the new technologies and uh, a lot of uh, good projects all around the Europe and uh, the world um, will join it. And uh, combining of these two aspects is like yin and yang uh, will uh, help us to find the harmony of the market, to find where we can earn money, where we can uh, implement the business, how you, we can be successful. So yes, we think that such summit it's a very good um, place to refresh your brains and to find new um, connections uh, in Switzerland on our experience, very good networking. So um, compared to Asia, so Asian people are so driven, uh, such a lot of movements, but you no know, uh, Swiss people uh, uh, are um, more effective. So they don't uh, run a lot, but they run mm -hmm. We love it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, all right. Uh, well, uh, thank you very much for your time. Uh, I hope uh, I wasn't taking too long with all these questions that we have collected. Uh, I'm really glad you're joining us uh, in the summit, and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, to see your um, FinForge uh, presentation participation there. Uh, well, uh, I hope uh, I hope everyone enjoyed this interview as much as I did, uh, and uh, I guess. Uh, Looking forward to see you in uh, in Basel, uh, November twenty second, twenty third. Yeah, me too, me too. So, guys, thank you for your time. Uh, I hope I wasn't so boring. <laughs> no, no, totally, yeah. you were not. Uh, see you in Basel. Yeah. Yeah. Thank Th you. Thank you. Have a good one. Um, Okay, guys. Uh, take care, everyone. Uh, we we will continue our uh, live interviews uh, with our guests and participants of the summit. Uh, stay tuned uh, to us on Facebook. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye.